presentation is under the title cardiogenic shock during diagnostic and um, 48 years old male smoker, hypertensive, not diabetic, he has history of chest pain with normal physical exam, normal ECG and echo. Yeah, his treadmill test was positive. For that reason, he underwent diagnostic angiogram. Honestly, the angiogram was done by my colleague who has recently started his learning curve in radial approach. Uh, the angiogram of the right system was normal, the RCA dominant and it's clear normal, and the left system was also normal. But the operator noticed that the crescent line, which is near the, near the ostium of the, this is the crescent, which is near the ostium of the left main. And the second view, after further injection, that crescentic area became more evident. It looks like a dissection that expands after further injection. He finished the procedure at that time, and he called me to discuss what's happened and what we will do at that moment. And I would like to ask the audience, anyone here, if he is in instead of us, what he will do at this moment. He finished the procedure with this end, with this result. You, no, no. Yeah. Okay, you use the mic. Do you have mic? Okay. And I'm, ass I'm assuming the patient is hemodynamically stable, and you say when he finished the procedure, the catheter is out. Is out. Yes. Right. And the patient is stable? Stable. Hemodynamically stable. I mean, it's difficult to judge. Clearly, there's some dye hold on the picture on the left, and there's looks like a dissection also in the left main. Uh, but that's why I'm asking for the moving images to be able to judge it. But yeah, it looks like a left main dissection. Yeah. So uh, you probably wouldn't leave it. I think, Mohamed, you know, I, I think what uh, our speaker is trying to say, because everyone, every time we say we see a dissection, don't inject. So now he stopped there. So what are we going to do now? Patient stable. Are you going to do more injection? No, do it's intervene? not about I mean, just to see what we are, you know, difficult to judge it. There is a dissection, clearly. Yeah. Uh, but for left main stem, you don't want to be taking any chances, particularly if it is caused by the catheter, because you lifted the flap against the blood flow, right? And with the blood flow, this could propagate, could cause a problem. So you can't leave this. This is different if you put a stent in the LED or the, and the, the, the dissection flap is opposite the flow, which is not a problem, but this is okay. a problem. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Before the, the, to ask, that's, this is very important, no more injection. You need to have a wire fast now. Will you before, intervene? before, before. Will you, will you intervene, I'm saying, or are you gonna, you gonna stop there? That's the kind of question you're asking. And Maybe where's the, the coronary sinus? Uh, I, I mean, how, uh, from these images, I, we you cannot can't see any coronary sinus involvement. Yeah, uh, honestly. Uh, what's uh, the extent of it, I mean, when you looked at it? Uh, honestly, I choose these uh, views because I uh, stick to the instruction that I should put a photo rather than movie. This is first. Second, I, I chose these views because these are the most clear. But what's happened is that the, after the finishing the angiogram, both the right and left system was normal. And we end with this dissection. And my question is that, shall we leave this patient on conservative medical treatment or we intervene? You know, if, if, I, if I see it correctly, the one on the right side, it's extended actually into LED. So that's significant dissection. It just will be difficult to leave it alone. If it's very limited, the left main, you can take your chances leaving it if the patient is stable and normal flow. But this one extended to LID, I think it would be difficult to leave it alone. Uh, go ahead, doctor. Yeah. Sorry, just to say, this is the balance of probability. Of course, you could leave it and nothing could happen. But if something happens, you're never going to forgive yourself. It's the balance of probability. If you leave this, is something else going to happen? And there's a high potential that could propagate. You can, course, you, and you can and intervene and cause problems. So. Sure, but, but you know, it's a balanced probability again. Yeah, but it's clear that this is done in class one, class one degree of classification. And class we, we decided that we observe the patient and we follow the patient conservatively. After 30 minutes, the patient came with severe chest pain, cardiogenic shock, diffused ST elevation all over the leads. And we brought him back to the cath lab. We achieved right femoral access, and we took a guide catheter, JR7 by four, and we immediately took a BMW guide wire. 
And if you can see in this frontocranial review is that the, the, the dissection compressing the left main tilt to the degree of subtotal occlusion. Honestly, when I introduced the guide wire, the flow became better. Then at that time, we decided to stand the left main to the LID using a stand 4 by 26 to the burst pressure. And the, these are the final result. The patient immediately improved, spot pressure improved, ECG changes improved. My take home message is that radial approach may be associated with serious complications during catheterization for doctors with poor learning care. And the proper handling of the catheters and guide wires may prevent complication. And early detection of complication is crucial for safety of the patients. Thank you. Doctor, can you go back to the, you know, once the patient had another event, you took him back. Yeah, go back. This one. So the, the left side is still radial or, or femoral? No, I went femoral. No, that one. Is that femoral, huh? Yeah. Doctor can, can, I, can I just... That side would be uh, femoral. Is the radial. Ah, so I'm saying, again, you went uh, radial? No, femoral. No, I think the one on the right is femoral. You could see it coming, but the one, no, no, that's the diagnostic. Side. That's the one from the beginning, oh, from the radial diagnostic. one. No, no, so you're taking us... Uh, okay, so once the patient had the problem, you went femoral, femoral. immediately. Okay, that's what I meant. Okay. I just go back to your take-home messages because I have an issue. With what, can you go back to us, your take-home messages? Go next one to take home messages. Yeah. No, the other way. Yeah, so radial approach has nothing to do with this. Sorry? Radial approach has nothing to do with this. Radial approach has become the default approach to uh, thousands and thousands, millions of approach. And it's how, if the catheter was a little, of course, in the early in your learning curve, it might be. Yeah, but that's it's not what the said. issue. That's what you said, doctor. You said. Somebody's early No, but the, his, the take radial may be associated with, it's not a radial approach, it's the, how, how you do the... Trying to help him. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, sh sure. Actually, uh, actually sure, the, sure the, now the guideline recommend radial as the plus one recommendation, but I, as, as I said, my colleague, he start his learning curve. Actually, again, I want to insist on the same message that radial is, is not a criminal here, it's not, it's not, Learning curve, radial, yes. no, learning. because because now <laughs> it is. Uh, this yeah. is the first thing. The second no. thing. No, no. I want to clarify the message actually sure. of the uh, of when to do injection, when not to do injection, when to put a wire, when not to put a wire, because when you have left main dissection, all of them are right, all of them are wrong. When to do this, when to do that. So just to clarify it, not to give injection when you have dissection or suspicion of dissection, because this is hydraulic dissection will happen there. Putting the wire in the false lumen also will increase the dissection and propagation. So the best thing actually is to have two guide catheters beside each other. You go with the wire. The wire doesn't go easily. You go from the second one. The second one most probably will go easily. And then you go with the true lumen and that one is the guide. Okay. I think this is the best way I have found to really differentiate where's the true lumen from the false lumen if you have an uh, osteal you, lift main you made, dissection. You made life difficult. Yeah, two guides. This is the right way. Yeah. I think that, you know, going back, we didn't have the video images, so it was, it was tough to say, but I think I'm not sure I would leave any yes. uh, left main dissection on a coronary angiogram, which, ha which is otherwise normal. That's probably uh, one of the take-home messages, that if you see left main, don't walk from it. This is, again, about understanding the problem and about kind of finding the solution. The problem is you create the dissection flap against the blood flow. And again, the balance probability, this is will propagate. And if you look at the images, the same as the previous case, the catheter was sitting really against it. And remember this diagnostic catheter, the lumen is very small. When you inject hard, you could generate up to 1,000 PSI. It's not, a gen it's not a gentle injection. You could generate high pressure, and this is why you cause the dissection. Lifting the guide up or the catheter up to make it coaxial make life much easier. Maybe this is the teaching point for anybody who's going to take an angiogram. When you see the catheter against, we'll just lift it up so you change the direction. That's, that's why I, I, I encourage my, my fellow in doing radial approach is that the cannulation is more complex than the femoral. You have to be gentle and careful. Do not push the guide wire in the front of the catheter while you engage the right or the left system. Three. Just, a final uh, just, I mean, both cases are, uh, you know, a trainee or a junior uh, people doing the procedure. So I, I just want to highlight the importance of supervising.
we have to ensure, I mean, you know, yes, they're juniors, but someone has to be next to them, has to guide them, has to teach them. Uh, I mean, at the end, this can happen, but with the juniors, please uh, be sure that you, you know, you supervise them closely. Excellent okay. point. Uh, three important uh, tips and tricks. Number one is the wire, the guiding, the wire, that's your normal wire, the standard wire 035. It's, you can go distally first and then slowly withdraw. The problem is when the young fellows do this and then up this uh, guiding, uh, that, uh, guiding uh, like this way. This is number one. Number two, you must look for the wave, the pressure wave. If you look for the pressure wave, it must be smooth, yes. not steep, not down. This is very important. Number three, as Mohamed mentioned, it's a very small uh, uh, diagnostic when you inject. So a soft injection, very gentle, okay. manual. Um, just to, uh, <clears throat> I think most of us will not feel happy leaving it without intervention. So if you're going to go conservative these cases, I think you will just go against the consensus. So you have to do something extra. So if I were you and I decided to take this approach, I will keep the patient with the cath lab. I will keep basically the, the uh, sheath in. I will just keep monitoring the patient for at least half an hour, maybe one hour. If nothing happened early on, probably can get away with conservative approach. If not, you'll be ready to intervene. So that waiting will be uh, symptoms dependent and uh, any vital, right? Hassan Latafi from Iraq, thank you very much for presenting your case with us. Thank you.